In 1977, I went to Washington for the Associated Press to cover the Carter administration. Well, I was sitting in my office in the Treasury, and I got a call from a reporter I'd never heard of before. We actually had lunch. He was smitten, minute one. That's absolutely correct. <laughs> it took a while for me to, uh, to really see him for the one yeah, human two being. two years. That it was, two years, yes. I asked her out 12 times, and she had 12 increasingly creative reasons to say no, and ultimately got down to washing my cat. Finally, we actually spent some time together one evening over dinner. And we just discovered our devotion to our Catholic faith, our interest in service to our country, and our love of travel and adventure. And then it took, I think, a couple more months before I went out with you again, but that's how it started. I was raised by a single mother, as my dad passed away when I was young. She was everything wrapped into one, and without her, I know I'd be in a very, very different place, as would my brother. 1968, Robert Kennedy announced for president, and I left school, went down to Indiana, and worked helping to organize volunteers. And it infused in me uh, a great interest in government and politics and service, which has stuck with me my, my whole life. It's gold as long as I've known him, was to you know, serve in the government as he did in the Carter administration, as he did in the Clinton administration, uh, means very much to him. And his other goal is to be able to help, to give back. Both he and Urate have that desire to give back. They very, very much care about the public interest. They very much care about public service. That's a wonderful thing that they share. I was born in Lithuania in 1943. The uh, Communist Party invaded our country in 44. My parents and I had to flee. I have always felt my legacy as an immigrant, as somebody who had to leave their homeland and was fortunate enough to end up in a country where we were welcomed and given many, many opportunities. There's no one quite like Kirati. There's no one with her combination of intelligence, compassion, passion, tenacity, and energy. She has so much energy. I became obsessed with the war because it was my generation that was fighting it, and I couldn't understand why women were not writing about war. I had no money, of course, so I went on a quiz show called Password, and I won $500, and that was uh, enough for Pan Am 101, a one-way ticket to Vietnam. She understands the power of storytelling, how important it is to bring the stories, the voices to the forefront. I think more than 60% of journalists covering the crises around the world are now women. And everybody's very used to seeing a woman with a helmet on and a flak jacket. And I don't think anybody's sitting in their living room saying, what's she doing there? But when I was there, it was very much, what is a woman doing covering this horrible, horrible war? I left government in the spring of 95. I decided to form a new investment banking firm. Now here, 21 years later, Evercore has been quite a success. It's a leader in a lot of the key sectors of that business, and uh, all of us involved with the firm are very proud of it. I think a lot of people can do analysis, a lot of people can do numbers. The thing that's really in short supply is, is wisdom and judgment, uh, annealed with honesty and purpose. Well, you ask what Roger brings to the table. Let's first make it clear that he brings to the table his cell phone. He goes nowhere without his cell phone. He is on his cell phone all the time. Some of us have been convinced that the best way to communicate with Roger, even if you're in the room with him, is to call him on the cell phone. He had the first cell phone in New York City, and I've got exact replica of the one that he got. <laughs> Whenever it began, he called me up. He was carrying it around in his briefcase. He was very, very excited about it. The most important single thing that the United States can do is to better educate more of its citizens because there's such a correlation between today, between levels of education and levels of income. And the only way we're going to turn around the decline in American living standards, I think, 
is better high school completion rates and better college completion rates. Education at the local level is very much about politics and you know government and the way it works and it's been extremely helpful in understanding the system and knowing where we might go to make things happen. There was always a practical aspect, a real-world aspect to MIT, and Roger is representative of that. Roger has helped gather around MIT CEOs of, of some of the largest companies in the world. St. Anne's is in the Mott Haven section of the South Bronx, which is and has been for decades the poorest part of the poorest congressional district in our entire nation. Roger and Yurate have been giving to this program for 21 years. That's extraordinary. They have a constant commitment to this neighborhood and to these children. They do not suffer from compassion fatigue. More than 85% of the world's refugees are women and girls. And their stories are very, very rarely told. She saw firsthand that nobody was actually talking to the women. No one was asking them about what they needed and what the humanitarian community could actually do to address those needs. And she connects in such a deep and personal way with people. She's able to gather information that we trained researchers can't even get to. What I've seen time and time again, it is the women who are leading the charge to talk, try to negotiate, and if they could only be given a greater role in peace processes around the world, I think we'd see an amazing difference. It's time to include women at the negotiating table. After the earthquake in Haiti, Roger organized a relief effort to bring medicine and supplies. And I came up with this idea to try to facilitate some kind of educational efforts while these children waited for the schools to reopen. Both of us contributed very spontaneously, actually. They don't just talk about it. Both Roger and Yurate make a contribution, give not only resources, but of themselves and their talent to love your neighbor as you love yourself. We, we take that very, very seriously. I think they have an enormous mutual respect. They're trying to use their talent and their resources and have been ever since they were young to, to greater purpose. That's the most admirable way that humans can act. Mm -hmm.